So for this patient, um, this is the individual, that, and we have clinical photos, who has uh, extremely pro-client central incisor, and also he has the additional issue of having uh, uh, maxillary excess, which becomes quite obvious as soon as you see the clinical photos. So the way this is going to be managed is really in two phases. Ultimately, we're going to be doing uh, immediate uh, dentures, maxillary, mandibular, immediate dentures, um, just because of poor positioning of teeth and uh, periodontal involvement of the remaining teeth. So the plan is to extract this tooth, this tooth, this tooth, and this tooth. So we're taking out the canine. We still have a central incisor, a lateral, and the other canine and we're going to go ahead and retain these three teeth and use them as um, retention for what's going to be uh, an immediate interim removal uh, partial denture to allow some time for healing and then ultimately we're going to go ahead and fabricate a maxillary and mandibular complete denture uh, once we have adequate healing of this ridge and most likely we'll have to probably do some additional alveoplasty. We'll get some shrinkage with healing, but as you can probably see, uh, we still have quite a bit of an undercut here. So we'll probably do alveoplasty at the time that the immediate denture is made. Um, not too dissimilar situation on the lower. Again, we have uh, proclined uh, canine. Uh, this one's not in too bad a position, but again, we have issues with periodontal disease. So. We're going to go ahead and um, remove those two teeth and again retain these two molars and this uh, premolar and again fabricate uh, again what's going to be an immediate interim removal partial denture. So to get kind of an idea of where we're going, uh, here you see in profile and from an anterior view the teeth that we have and here's what we have proposed for the uh, I'm going to go ahead and take the pin out so it's a little easier to see uh, what we have proposed for the interim um, removal partial denture. Now this is waxed all the way up into the vestibule but uh, obviously it would be difficult to insert that so uh, in the interest of time and uh, m multiple adjustments what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and contour these areas back so it's basically butting up against this anterior ridge and of course, uh, as the patient heals, we're going to get some shrinkage of the soft tissue, obviously, as it remodels. And with that said, I'll probably be using some kind of reline material uh, until we have some adequate healing. So, again, this will be contoured back sort of like the way I'm drawing it. Now, I'll, I'll show a picture of it in a little bit after I spend some time adjusting that area. Again, you can see we have some pretty significant. Uh, um, Overjet, uh, and uh, but uh, I put no vertical overlap in this because this has basically been set up in a flat plane arrangement. Um, but as I say, um, this will be step one. We'll allow healing, and then step two will be to fabricate uh, immediate uh, complete dentures. So I'll go ahead and recontour these and pop it back on again so you can see, and then uh, that'll be that for right now. So what I've done is uh, removed part of that anterior flange that we had waxed in before and as you can see um, I cut it back quite a bit because I really want to make it a so-called flangeless denture and just have it butt right up against the ridge and uh, even with that said you can see in profile that we still have a significant amount of uh, undercut there and that the teeth even though they're a little bit more positioned uh, lingually when you compare it to the uh, before cast, you see that we've maybe improved the tooth position and hopefully uh, we can manage some of the lip incompetence associated with this uh, excessive flaring of the anterior teeth and the maxillary excess. So as I said, this is go just going to be step one um, and then uh, following adequate healing, 
We'll go ahead to the next step, which will be the fabrication of the uh, maxillary mandibular or complete denture. And again, you can see what significant amount of uh, horizontal overjet so these are all things to, to uh, deal with as we move along and uh, next time we'll uh, show what's being done for the uh, immediate denture itself we're going to do uh, what's called the campagna technique for making the maxillary denture and uh, what this means is basically we'll have a tray that will extend down to about oh, three millimeters into the depth of the vestibule. And this is so we can border mold it and so the tray will actually have cutouts around the remaining teeth, which will be hopefully these three for the maxillary arch. And the tray will fit down over it and these will just poke up through it. We'll border mold the tray as you would for conventional literature <clears throat> and then go ahead and pick up the entire impression in a in an alginate impression. So sometimes it's called a sectional impression, and the, this particular technique was described by Campagna, so it's called, sometimes called the Campagna technique. <laughs>